time plays the world. Discovery Park in Sacramento, where the Sacramento and American Rivers meet. This week, the best beach volleyball players in the world meet to try and stop the raging current that is Carolyn Kirby and Liz Masakayan. <laughs> Welcome to Discovery Park just outside of downtown Sacramento, the state capital in California, for another event on the Women's Pro Beach Volleyball Tour. And hi once again, everybody, along with Maria Barnes, I'm Drew Goodman. If you followed this tour this year or last year, the same story exists. Carolyn Kirby and Liz Masakayan have rolled along. They've won 18 of 20 events together, including the last two stops. And they're playing great this weekend. They're such strong, powerful players that this hard-packed surface works really well for them. They're serving very tough. They're getting to a lot of balls and their setting game is back on. That's a part of their game that they've struggled with the last few weeks. Another team playing well this weekend that really didn't play well last weekend in Hermosa Beach. The team of Barbara Fontana and Lori Cotis Forsyth. They seem to be back on their game. Yes, they got a fifth last week in Hermosa Beach and they seem to be playing very well. Again, they're another team who does well in the heat. I mean, Lori calls herself a camel. She just loves to play in the heat and she moves really well in this hard pack surface. Hermosa was tough for her because she's such a big girl. Now, this is an important weekend because the next stop on tour will come in Newport, Rhode Island. It is a shootout. We will be there on Prime Network. And a shootout means the top eight teams only compete. So there was a mad scramble for those final two slots. That's right. And they went to Kendall and Gardner and Christine Schaefer. They're a young team, an up-and-coming team. Kenji Gardner, the youngest player to ever play in a shootout. And the other spot to Janice Hare and Lisa Arce. Lisa Arce is the 24th seeded player on the tour. Quite a break for her and I think they're going to be a good team. I mean Janice needed a right side player and she needed a blocker and that's what she's getting in Lisa RC. The finals are up next from Sacramento. Prime Network's presentation of the Coors Light Pro Beach Volleyball Tour is brought to you by Coors Light. When you want a taste that goes the distance, reach for the silver bullet. Coors Light, keep on moving. By Gatorade, the thirst quencher for that deep down body thirst. And by Reebok. Get it moving. Bullet has the taste to keep it moving. Brews Light. Naturally brewed for a taste that goes down easy. Coors Light. Keep on moving. is for all those commercials that show women content with seeing their reflections in dinner plates or coffee tables. Serious performance shoes from Reebok. Available at over 400 foot action stores nationwide. Research has demonstrated that the air is an effective carbohydrate. No other beverage has been proven more effective than Gatorade. And consuming Gatorade during exercise has been shown to absorb 30% faster than water. Gatorade contains the optimal balance of carbohydrates and water. No other beverage has been proven more effective at replacing nothing as much as your deep down body thirst better. Scientifically tested, athletically proven. Only Gatorade Thirst Quencher is liquid technology for that deep down body thirst. Come on to play! Get it moving. Keep, keep, keep on moving. And the silver bullet has the taste to keep it moving. Cools light. Naturally brewed for a taste that goes down easy. Cools light. Keep on moving.
And welcome back to Discovery Park in Sacramento. We are set for our finals. Along with Maria Barnes, I'm Drew Goodman, Lori Cody, Forsyth, and Barbara Fontana. Again, challenging Liz Masakian and Carolyn Kirby. They've met 10 times in the past in the finals. Yes, Kirby and Masakian have won nine of those, but the team that has been most successful of any team against Kirby and Masakian is Forsyth and Fontana. Forsyth and Fontana just play them very well. They slow the game down. Kirby and Masakian don't like that. But anytime you have a team where one, a situation where one team is more dominant. You're always looking for something to kind of equalize things. Sometimes it's the wind. Here it's this hard patched surface because we're not seeing the usual number of aces from Kirby and Masakian that we do in a tournament. So that is an edge for Forsyth and Fontana. Plus, Lori moves really well on this surface. Traditionally, when these two teams meet, it is a great final. Let's get the player introductions right now from Denny Lennon. The Discovery Park for the finals of the Reebok Sacramento Open. All right, volleyball fans, it's time to meet the players. First, standing five foot six, out of Hermosa Beach, California, last season's top defensive player, Barbara Fontana. and Fontana have won the toss and they will begin serving. Barbara Fontana will be at the back line. Steve Burmaster is the referee up top. Pretty good crowd here and we should tell everybody that there is uh, one of the great club tournaments for right, high school go. age players taking place uh, this week at uh, UC Davis. So a lot of those players in attendance. Big hit, but it works as a point. What a dig and she obviously holding, surprised hold. her opponent. What a holding. play by Fontana. Kirby just unloaded with that hit. And Lori Forsythe was uh, reaching up uh, to help it out over the net but it turned out to be Here we a go. beautiful shot so one to nothing. Chance and Masakayan on the over set who was there with the left hand. Otherwise, it might have been two to nothing. We will see a lot of deep, okay, we'll great defensive hey, plays in this we'll match because we are on this defense. hard, Something quick surface. Let's get it out of court. You'll notice both teams touch a lot of balls. Okay, like we saw Barbara here. Fontana do there. So, right, Liz Masakayan, former UCLA star, will serve. Fontana's wide down the line, so we're at 1-1. One, one. One's up there. That's a great oh, error by Barbara Fontana, a little bit uncharacteristic. We have a timeout on the court. 1-1, one, one. Fontana and Forsyth, and Liz Masakian and Carolyn Kirby. The title match from Sacramento. Here's the... Several months ago, I was in a real bind, financially, and I needed a quick loan. I dropped into Ready Cash Pawn Shop and they helped me out with a substantial loan on my jewelry. They'll even let you renew the loan with the payment going towards the interest and the balance. Remember the red awning, that's Ready Cash Pawn Shop. Problems can be a dead end. Bust loose. Charlie Thomas can get you financed. Divorced. Bankrupt.
bankrupt. Slow credit, no credit. Second Chance Finance reestablishes your credit through one of Houston's biggest banks. Then choose from over 2,000 used vehicles from 250 down. 250 down. And purchase no additional insurance on Charlie Thomas's Second Chance Finance used cars and trucks. No additional insurance at all 14 Charlie Thomas outlets throughout Houston. As he is going to the dogs at Houston's own Golf Greyhound Park. Take an inside look at the exciting world of Greyhound racing from the starter's gate to the finish line. Tuesdays at 4.30 on HSE. Kirby and Masakai and Fontana and Forsyth tied at one championship match from the Reebok Sacramento Open. Here's the Chevy Pro Challenge points. As you would expect, Kirby and Masakai and way out in front. Next up, the team they meet in these finals. Then Castro and Roque at the end of the season. The team that accumulates the most points will win a brand new either Chevy Camaro or Chevy truck. And uh, I think if it's Carolyn Kirby and Liz Masakai, they'll probably opt for the truck since last year they got the Camaro. <laughs> Yes, they need to go for the utility vehicle now. That's right. But they have the sports car. Uh huh. The four by four. One one. Masakayan to serve. Get there! Get there! Get there! Good adjustment by Barbara Fontana to hit that set by Lori Forsyth. Playing conditions today, it is warm, 92, but not nearly as warm as they say it can get here in Central California in the summer months. They talk about 110, 115 degrees. Thank goodness it is only 92. And a breeze. Liz Masakayan again dug by Fontana. to the net. Super job digging by Fontana and Forsyth for a point. We'll see Barbara Fontana make several quick defensive plays because of this hard packed surface, but you need to give some credit to her partner, Lori Forsyth, who does such a good job of aligning the defense with her block. We have a timeout on the court. While we do, a chance to introduce a new segment. We call it the WPVA Beach Network. <laughs> Julie Buckfire of Newton, Massachusetts writes, I know there's a lot of trash talking in men's volley. Is there any on the women's tour? If so, who's the best? Who's the best trash talker who better to ask than the best team? Liz, who is it? It's Maria. <laughs> she tries and gets all the gossip from us. It's my job. No, and there's a Brenda <laughs> Frey from Reebok. Um, Bob Foster, Chevrolet, Camp Fonda from Coors. We're trying to get under all the players' skin, get all the scoop out of them. You know, as players, we just play. Mm -hmm. You know how to uh, get some... <laughs> Additional sponsorship, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Carolyn, what do you think? Well, outside of you, you mean? <laughs> um, actually, we, you know, we don't do that. We're, we're Come on. Beyond. We have no need for that kind of thing. We're pure competitors. Plus, you get a uh, yellow card if you cuss, so. That's right. We have to watch it, you know. I mean, that's a point. So. Your, right. your tongues are tied. We've been trained, well trained. Yes. Yes. It's, it's a TV thing. It's definitely a TV thing. These guys are obviously yeah. being far too diplomatic. Let's see what some <laughs> other players had to say. Probably Deb's one of the better yeah. ones at it. Deb Richardson, I would say, hands down. Yes. She has the, some of the best it's trash looks. Yeah, it's a trash look, trash talk, yeah. trash spit. For me, I'm focusing more on my little baby girl, Hannah, so I'm not really worried about the gossip going around. Right, Hannah? Yeah, there is a little bit. I mean, little faces and little, you know, you get them behind the uh, player's tent and you just never know what you might hear out there. <laughs> so I don't know if I can oh, say no, no, it. Oh, no, 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 I have it, I have it. It's silent. <laughs> she doesn't need a line. My opinion, Drew, take the bar soap out of your mouth and talk to me. Oh, I'll respond to that in a moment. First, the address. Contact us on our beach network at Prime Network, 5251 Golfton Street, Houston, Texas, 77081. Right, now, Maria, come on. You know me better than that. I never trash talk. I'm like Kirby and Masakayan. Would never do that. Masakayan cut shot. Well done. Side out. We do talk about their patience uh, against Liz and Carolyn. They're a kind of team that want to knock Carolyn you out in 15 Kirby minutes, get off the court, and get an air condition. Especially tonight because they've got a 6 o'clock flight here out of Sacramento. <laughs> so don't be at all surprised if this one goes quickly. One serving two. Good, good. 
with the cut shot. Her patented cut shot, she loves to hit this shot from the right side more than any other. And look how sharp the trajectory of that cut shot was pretty incredible. She did a good job of uh, seeing Liz up there with the block and hitting around her. Kirby just hammered it through the block of Lori Forsythe, another side out. With this hard pack surface, you will see Kirby and Masakai and, and you know, all of the players on the court getting so much further out of the sand than we saw the last tournament in Hermosa Beach. But you especially notice it with Carolyn Kirby. She just really skies in the surface. That was a facial. Illegal contact, double contact. And if you're at home trying to wonder uh, how you can tell when they call it, the volleyball on a handset will spin a little bit. And if it does that, you might see the referee call an illegal uh, illegal contact. 2-2. Two -two. Nope. That just missed. The line goes long. And we'll get a side out. Down the line wide, and that's a point. So Fontana and Forsyth go to the first side change with a three to two advantage over Carolyn Kirby and Liz Masakayan. We're in the California State Capitol of Sacramento, and we'll be back right after these messages on Prime Network. something else and you can express yourself any way you want. Not crazy. I am prime. And I play the world. And welcome back to Sacramento along with Maria Barnes. I'm Drew Goodman. Earlier, Maria had a chance to cruise the boardwalk with tour veteran Gail Stammer and we find out that Gail is just one of many tall women in her family. People would look at Gail Stammer and say, she's 6'2", she's got a beautiful physique, she's your perfect beach volleyball player. Why wouldn't everyone want to play with Gail Stammer? <laughs> You're very flattering. <laughs> um, I think because not everybody is compatible to play with a 6'2 player like myself. What was it like growing up in a family with four sisters and you're all tall? I mean, did you were you the center of attention everywhere you went? Um, yeah, I think that people take notice. Um, I know that when we're traveling with the tour and I'm with other tall women, people will approach us in the airport and actually start talking to us. Is it helpful to you that your sister Wendy is competing now also? I hope that I'm helpful to Wendy because I can give her advice on things regarding the beach volleyball circuit, um, you know, how to get seen, how you know, be aggressive, call people if you want to play with a certain partner. Um, I think all those things are important and I hope she can take that advice. And your other sisters, are they athletes? My oldest sister, Leslie, um, was actually a race walker. She competed for a while. My second sister, Joan, was a top swimmer um, in college. 
You played professional volleyball in Italy for three years. How was that? I thought they, I think they thought I was a UFO or something, but <laughs> I did get a lot of stares and, um, you know, I was, I was just different. Mm -hmm. I was different because it was a different type of a female role model. Um, not always did they like that, but, um, and, you know, I was very independent. People appreciated that. She has a great sense of humor. You know, she and Monique Oliver have had a great season so far. They've had three fourths. They just came very close to taking a, their first third together. They finished uh, in, in fourth place, a great overtime match that they lost to uh, Schubert Canoop and Deb Richardson, as you mentioned. 3-2, Lori Forsyth to serve. Masakayan punches it wide. Down. No, there was contact. It was uh, partially blocked, so that does work as a side out. Two serving three. Carolyn Kirby to the back line. The serving strategy of Forsyth and Fontana thus far. And it looks as if definitely Lori uh, touched this ball. Definitely a touch, but as Here I was going go. to say, it looks like the serving strategy so far of Forsyth and Fontana has been to go at Masakai, and that's the fifth serve to her, and it's working so far. Service winner, Fontana couldn't pass it. We're even at three, and if there is a surface that they can really set the ball low and quickly, this would be the surface. That's true, Drew, because you can obviously get to the ball Hold quicker on. and it's tough to keep the pressure on with serving because you are moving more quickly. Still Although holding. Kirby certainly puts the pressure on here with this serve. I mean, look how high she gets out of the sand with her jump serve. It looks almost as if she's here, spiking here the ball. Three, three, Kirby again goes up. And that just missed being an ace. You have one traditional blocker out there in Lori Cotis Forsyth and three other very uh, athletic players. Not to say that Lori is not athletic, but she is more of a traditional blocker. And she's probably the best blocker on the tour. I mean, she's definitely up there. She's just such a smart blocker. And, you know, as I've said several times before, so much of blocking is aligning the defense, and Lori does that better than anyone. And she's able to do it right here for a point. She just does a good job. You see how quickly she gets up and over the net there. There we go. Masakine didn't even have a chance to hit that ball. Off the block that time, Liz Masakine. Matt on the side out, three serving four. Liz put it in play. Masakayan read it, Masakayan goes up, Masakayan scores, 4-4. Four, four. Such an explosive player. Look how quickly she just gets up and wails on the ball. Her yeah, arm in. swing is amazing. Here we go. going to go wide to so another point, 5-4, and for the first time, Kirby and Masakayan are in the lead. little breakdown in ball control for Forsyth and Fontana. Great set for Masakayan. And she hit the smart shot to make it 6-4. We'll get a side change, a quick flurry from the top team on the beach. They can do that. Masakayan and Kirby up 6-4.
that make HSE the best team on TV. Celebrate July Independence by setting yourself free on HSE. HSE Baseball earns its stars and stripes by being the only place to catch both American and National League action. Minor League Baseball's best sparkle in the AA and AAA All-Star Game. The CISL joins in the celebration with the Dallas Sidekicks and Houston Hotshot. Plus, it's time to rev up things with auto racing. Can't have a party without chips and hot dogs on the tennis circuit? Shoot the words this July on HSE. The Best Team Outdoors features the best block of outdoor programming in the Southwest. A group of the finest sportsmen ever assembled to help you catch more fish, have better hunts, and enjoy the great outdoors. True sportsmen practice catch and release, conservation, and preservation of nature. But they bring something home as well. A great time. Up our next event, the Reebok Shootout, a shootout, a different format. The top eight teams on tour competing around Robin. That's always a lot of fun. Newport, Rhode Island, what a town. We'll be there July 12th, and check your local listings for the time in your area. What makes that event so fun is that every single match is a good match because you have only the top teams there. And it's a, it's a true test of their athleticism because they're out there playing tough and hard for two straight days every single match. Second serve, gotta go. Masakine's timing seems to be off with her serve. Liz Masakine and Carolyn Kirby have uh, benefited from a long third place match and they played the first semifinal so they've had a couple of hours to rest and, and get in uh, cooler temperatures. Cut shot goes wide. And there's a point. 5-6. So important for Forsyth and Fontana to stay in the match early. You know, it's surprising to me to see that Kirby is still setting Masakayan so tight to the net, even against the formidable block of Lori Forsyth. I think I'd pull my setting off a little bit, give Masakayan a, a little more room to work with. I mean, you know, it, traditionally you want a set that's right on the net. That's the easiest set to hit. But I think against Forsyth it can some, sometimes be more difficult because she is such a good blocker. Lori Forsyth did a great job there to set her partner. It was not a great pass by Fontana. And Forsyth tracked it down. It's definitely one of Lori's strengths. She is a really good setter and a great blocker. Kirby and Masakayan leading in kills, but on the scoreboard with just a one-point advantage, six to five. Masakayan 29. And there's a shank pass, and well, you rarely see that from the ball control team of Fontana and Forsyth. Maybe there's a little communication breakdown, but Lori did not move her feet here. You could see she just kind of stuck her arms out. It looked as if her feet were glued into the Holding. position in which she started. Here we go. Good. I got you. Come on, cross, cross, cross. Oh. Cut shot. Good job that time by Fontana. And Forsyth had to kind of track that ball over a blind spot over her head before she could hit that. That was more difficult than it appeared. Yeah, that's true. It's always hard to hit a set that's uh, kind of wavering to the outside. And especially for Forsyth, she likes a little quick set right in the middle of the court. Fontana got it up, but 
Lori Forsyth was nowhere near that. 7-5. We get a side out. Masakayan wails this ball. I mean, it's amazing that Fontana's able to get her hands up there that quickly and pop the ball up. Almost knocked her over. <laughs> Carolyn Kirby approaching $300,000 in career earnings. Over on two, smart shot. No, it just missed. It went wide, so it's 8-5. She shot the ball in two, but Barbara missed. You know, when you're playing against Kirby and Masakai, and though you have to go for the crafty, quick plays, that's one of the ways to beat them is to kind of mix the game up and try to take them out of their game. becomes almost imperative that Fontana and Forsythe score here before the side change. Yeah. A match can get away from you so quickly against Kirby and Masakayan. That's over, that's plenty good. Forsythe, it's wide, point, 10-5. Zakayan doing it with defense with a five-point advantage now. One of the things I think that threw Lori off on that play was the fact that Masakayan went up. I mean, here's here's just a great scrambling dig by Masakayan, first of all. I mean, just amazing that she was able to turn and play that ball back over her head. But here, Masakayan kind of does the fake block. She goes up, she acts as if she's going to block. I think Lori recognized that and kind of threw her off when she realized that she didn't have a block up. Unbelievable play by Masakayan. She blocks it and digs it all in one motion. Unreal. 10-5. We're in Sacramento. Uh, stick around. To give my home a nice atmosphere, I've tried French Provincial, Danish Modern, English Country, and Spanish Colonial. Little did I know that for nice atmosphere, all I really needed was American Standard, a reliable American Standard air conditioning system. It's one design that will last. I wish I'd known that back during my Spanish colonial period. American Standard Air Conditioning, built to a higher standard. Get it moving. And the silver bullet has the taste to keep it moving. Coors Light. Naturally brewed for a taste that goes down easy. Coors Light. Keep on moving. Hey, baseball fans. HSC wants you to watch. The Rangers. And the Astros. So you can go coast to coast. Coast to coast. One lucky fan wins two trips. Two trips. Win a trip to New York. And to San Francisco. To see the Yankees and Rangers. And the Giants and the Astros. The winner goes coast to coast for fantasy play-by-play. -play. All you have to do to win is watch the games. Watch the games. Just watch the Rangers. And the Astros. To go coast to coast. With HSE Baseball. The, the best, best team, team on, on TV. TV. Unbridled excitement is yours when HSE takes you from the starting gate to the finish line. It's the latest news from Sam Houston Race Park on the stretch run. Tuesday evenings at 5 on HSE. Fun in the sun? You bet. But there's no shovels and pails here. Just all out, non-stop, sand, blast, and excitement. The WPPA Volleyball Tour. Serving it up on HSE. We are back in Sacramento, the state capital of California, for the Reebok Sacramento Open. Liz Masakayan took some time out of her busy schedule to give us all some tips on passing. It's how we play the game, brought to you by Reebok. Hi, I'm Liz, and today we're talking about passing. And I'm not talking about passing class or passing that jerk going 50 miles an hour on the freeway when you're late to go to the beach. I'm talking about serve receiving. Volleyball, serve receive. And if you can't do that, let me tell you, you're going to look dumb when your opponents start acing you off the court. And you know what? There's nothing more I hate than looking dumb. 
thing you need to know about passing is your hand and arm position. What you want to do is put both your arms out, put your palms up, put one on top of the other, and your thumbs together. Lock your elbows and keep your arms away from your body so you can see the ball come into your arms. But keep in mind the arm position means nothing unless you can move your feet to get to the ball. So how you want to do that is to position yourself in service seat, to kind of be in a position where you can move either way, forwards, backwards, left or right. Your knees are slightly bent, your back forward and your arms kind of in front so they're in your visual field. The indoor volleyball requires the passer to pass to a specific target, always regardless of where you pass from. So in outdoor volleyball, since there's only two people, you must pass the ball to a spot in relation to where you are passing from. That's what I call an L position. A basic drill to do with your partner for passing is drawing a circle, such as this one, and pass the ball forward, making your partner step from within the circle. Generally, you should pass the ball up to anywhere from three to eight feet in front of the net. The ball should be passed not too high, but not too low. A comfortable height for your partner to set with her hands is a good pass. If you pass on the sideline, then your partner needs to come to the edge of the circle closest to you. If you pass from your server seat position, then your partner will set you from the middle of the circle. And if you pass a middle serve, then your partner will be at the other edge of the circle furthest away from you. Now remember, in order to be a good passer, you want to get good ready position, get your feet to the ball, make good contact with your arms. And most importantly, you have to smile when the photographer is in your face. With all those Reebok ads she's doing, she's got that smile down pat, I'd say. I would agree with that. That was good stuff. Did you learn something? I learned a lot. Can you pass the ball now? Uh, probably not, but I learned how to do it. Probably not when I'm serving anyway, right? No. a side out, a much needed side out. Fontana will serve. You have not seen many aces this weekend, and one of the reasons is, is the speed of the surface. It's easier to get to the good serves. There's a really good serve, but Kirby handles it. Block down, maybe that's just what Forsythe and Fontana needed. The big block, the stuff block, put up by Lori Forsythe. Up and over so quickly. She does a good job of penetrating, but also Kirby hit that ball low. She did not extend when she hit there. Timing was just a little bit off. Good dig. Forsyth was in the net on that block. That's too bad. That was an amazing dig by Fontana. Right in position. Fontana reads so well, anticipates so well. Okay, we're holding. I don't necessarily agree with that call. Do you know what? I don't know if I saw that either. Go. That's a tough break. Might have Maybe happened on the way down, but very close, tough break. Might have taken a point away. That'll get down in the sand, and it's a point, 11-6. So quickly, Kirby and Masakayan with an answer. You have to be so careful about your shot selection on this quick surface because it's easy to pick those shots up. That's why you're seeing Kirby and Masakayan hit so many balls, and Fontana and Forsyth rely a lot on their shots. Good, no! Liz didn't get over the top, didn't get any top spin on that jump serve. Yes. Six serving 11. Now Forsyth, in contrast to her partner, will stay on the ground when she serves and hustle up to get in blocking position. I've always felt that if you do stay on the ground, you can ill afford to have as num uh, the number of service errors that a jump server will have. I agree. I mean, if you're uh, serving a basic float serve, you need to you need to make them. You need to have a pretty uh, good, like 95% at least, you need to make of your serves because your partner just counts on that. You're not going to get a lot of aces, but you need to keep the pressure on by keeping the serve in. Kirby showing what she did to uh, dig the volleyball, but it just went out. She was really in position to dig the ball. She should have been able to pass it up to her partner a little better, but uh, she didn't bend her arms and kind of cushion the shock of the hit.
chance to score for Fontana. Cut shot, well done. It's a point 11-7. As I mentioned earlier, Kirby and Masakayan have the ball really high. I mean, Kirby set her high and uh, Masakayan passed the ball really high. They need to lower the ball and speed up their game a little bit. When you dig a ball, it's similar to tennis. It's like a break point. You must convert against Kirby and Masakayan. They did there. That's an overset, and that'll cost them. Forsyth went up, read it, and just knocked it over. Kirby and Masakayan. Rarely see Carolyn Kirby with an overset. She is just such a tremendous setter. She's been voted the best setter on the beach several times. 11-8. So Fontana and Forsyth not out of it yet. We'll come back to Sacramento in our championship match on Prom Network right after this. So, you want to buy a computer? Hi, I'm Lee Hooley, computer consultant for Fortune 500 companies. I've written an easy-to-read booklet telling you what you must know, and maybe we're afraid to ask, before you buy. This year, the computer industry is going after you. Be prepared with information like, should I buy? Does brand matter? Hardware, software, definitions, configurations, and costs. Get my booklet for some realistic professional consulting before you buy. You'll be glad you did. Cruise the Bahamas, Cozumel, or Key West for free. TCI Cablevision presents the Big Red Boat Sweepstakes, co-sponsored by Cruises, Cruises, and the Big Red Boat. Win one cruise for two, including airfare. Watch the mail for your TCI coloring contest entry form to win a fabulous cruise. Plus free entry forms in all discovery zones at the TCI Cruise Display. Your monthly statement also contains extra seaworthy savings from Cinemax, HBO, or Disney. Call the TCI event hotline today. Bon voyage! Fun in the sun? You bet. But there's no shovels and pails here. Just all out, non-stop, sand, blast, and excitement. The WPPA Volleyball Tour. Serving it up on HSE. 11-8, Kirby and Masakayan leading Fontana and Forsyth in Sacramento with Maria Barnes. I'm Drew Goodman. Time to check our ace leaders for the tournament, our Coors Light Silver Bullet ace leaders. Monique Oliver with a very good tournament. They finish in fourth along with her partner, Gail Stammer. Krista Blumquist also with, also with plenty of aces. Gail Castro, who leads, did not have one ace in this tournament. Liz Masakayan has a great serve, and she was telling us earlier that uh, she's done some repair work on it of late. I've worked on a little bit more accuracy, less errors, and a little less power, so I can keep more serves in. I haven't noticed that. I mean, she, to me, is one of the players that goes out and serves, you know, all out every single time. It certainly looks that way. Canada serve it up 8-11. Barbara Fontana, two points in a row. See if they can keep it going. They're within three. Side out. Liz Masakayan has hit a couple of serves long in this match, actually three. Let's see if she does what she just said she has been doing and takes uh, something off here. That was a strong serve. Good up that time. It's got to go over. Beautiful cut shot by Fontana. Delicately done. Just takes a, a great deal of practice repetition to hit a shot that fine, that consistently. Plus, when you're doing it from the left side of the court, it's even more difficult because you're turning your hand to the outside. When you're doing a cut shot from the right side of the court, it's a lot easier. Big hit by Kirby, 47 side out, and you saw there's only been one lead change. Actually, early in the match, the lead was with Fontana and Forsythe. Big hit, but handled by Kirby. Fontana's there. Oh, terrific get. Masakayan's got to get it over. A two. Net cord helped. What a point. Best point of the match. Maybe of the tournament. And what a break for Fontana to end it with a 
ball ticking the net. It completely made the ball right, change direction. Kirby running. unable to get to it. I mean, notice how quickly both teams are moving in the sand. I mean, a couple incredible gets that never would have been close in the soft sand. And then here, a break for Fontana. Kirby in position to get anything because it ticked the net. She wasn't able to. A couple of knuckle scrapers there to get the ball elevated. 11-8. Kirby and Masakayan with the three-point advantage in Sacramento. This is for all those commercials that show women content with seeing their reflections in dinner plates or coffee tables. Serious performance shoes from Reebok. Available at over 400 foot action stores nationwide. going to show you just what water's made of. 120 minutes of pure liquid energy, taking you to the hottest sports in the world of water. And that's just a drop in the bucket. So venture into the H2O zone on HSE. Eleven to eight, Kirby and Masakayan leading Fontana and Forsyth. That was short. It hit the net 11-9, and it was a very successful side change for Fontana and Forsyth. They make up quite a bit on Kirby and Masakine, and now they're just two points down. Again, a reminder, next time we visit with you, we will be to the east, all the way to the east. And Newport, Rhode Island for the Reebok shootout. The top eight teams on the tour will be competing in that. You will certainly see Kirby and Massakine and Fontana and Forsyth. July 12th, the date. Check your local listings on Prime Network as we continue to bring you the top women's professional volleyball action in the world. And speaking of the world, the top team in the world off of international play this offseason was Carolyn Kirby and Liz Masakayan. But that team, Forsyth and Fontana, able to, to beat them in an international uh, event in Miami. I don't know if there's any other team on the beach that enjoys playing internationally as much as Forsyth and Fontana. They were thrilled to have qualified to go to St. Petersburg, Russia in a few weeks. And the reason for that is because Lori was telling me she learned so much by watching these other countries' plays because they just have a different style, especially the Brazilians. And the Brazilians probably will be the foremost competition to the Americans, not only at the Goodwill Games, but also when you talk about uh, the Olympic Games in Atlanta in 1996. Beach volleyball in uh, Brazil is just such a big sport. I mean, their best beach volleyball players are national heroes. It's just different there. Let's check the scoring by serves, Maria in this match and Carolyn Kirby has scored five points when she has been served. They really were going at Liz Masakayan early but that has changed a little bit. Yeah, they seem to have mixed things up a little bit and it's working for them. I mean, when you start on one player and you're not successful with it or the success doesn't last, then sometimes it is good to kind of mix it up and go at the other player and see if perhaps they're having an off day. Unfortunately for Forsyth and Fontana, it doesn't appear that either Kirby or Masakine is having an off day. But right now, they're within two points. We get a side change. The court has been watered down a little bit, which will, again, make it very quick. Barbara Fontana, Stanford graduate, 
We'll get it in play. Masakayan did a good job passing that serve. It was one of those serves that was over the shoulder. Now. Tough to handle, but Liz did so very well. So important when you're passing a ball like that to just move your feet and get in position so the ball stays in front of you. Great up by Masakayan. One-handed dig, and she cleans it up. That's about the fifth time she's done that in this match. She's making it look so easy. You can tell that she's just feeling quick and confident out here on this quick surface. She was completely parallel to the ground with the dig, scrambles out of the sand to rip a sweet set by her partner Kirby. 12-9. And you can see Masakayan a bit frustrated with the number of service errors that she's had in this match. That was her fourth one. But again, as I said, she really goes for it with her serves. Despite what she said, I think she goes pretty much all out every time she goes back to serve. She's looking to score a point. Well, it appears that way, though. Carolyn Kirby. She hasn't had an opportunity to let go with the shoulder in a while, and she did there. I'll tell you one thing that Kirby and Masakayan are doing very well is keeping the ball deep on Forsyth and Fontana. You'll notice they're hitting deep, except for when they pound the ball to the three-foot line, and they're serving deep, and, and uh, right now Forsyth seems to be having trouble with that. There's a strong strike. Big kill that time by Fontana. Numbers to each other. Nine serving 12. Fontana to serve nine 12. I think when these two players first uh, joined up uh, a little more than a year ago, there was some skepticism about how it would work together. They actually have great chemistry. I mean, Barbara's such a fiery player, and Lori says she just kind of mellows her out. She's not going to mellow her out there, though, because she's excited about that ace. Surprising. I mean, Carolyn Kirby just seemed like she was a little bit confused as to whether the ball was in or out. Yeah, we're holding. We are holding. And you know what? Right after she was unable to play it, Kirby looked at the line as if to uh, say, was I too close to it? Did I play an out ball? And she just looked at it again. It's a tough call because she's up in the court. Kirby, like no other player on the tour, able to hang and make her decision in the air where she's going to go with the volleyball. You see so many famous basketball players able to do that, but I'll tell you, Kirby does it better than any volleyball player I've ever seen. That was wide. And a fifth service error for Liz Masakayan. Win or lose, Liz will lament that after the match. <laughs> That's so true. Masakayan gets the side out. This has settled down into one of those typical Kirby Masakayan Fontana Forsyth matches. A lot of side outs, a lot of longer points for beach volleyball because you have some very athletic players and very good defensive players. Masakayan almost expected Kirby to get that up. She was ready for this play. They have so much confidence in each other. Hey, that is so good. It's beyond description. 13-10, Kirby and Masakayan, two points away from yet another title. Give my home a nice atmosphere. I've tried French Provincial, Danish Modern, English Country, and Spanish Colonial. Little did I know that for nice atmosphere, all I really needed was American Standard, a reliable American Standard air conditioning system. It's one design that will last. 
I wish I'd known that back during my Spanish colonial period. American Standard Air Conditioning, built to a higher standard. Yeah, Get yeah, it yeah. moving. Keep on, keep on, keep on. Silver Bullet has the taste to keep it moving. Come on! Come on! Brewers Light. Naturally brewed for a taste that goes down easy. Coors Light. Keep on moving. Hey, baseball fans. HSC wants you to watch. The Rangers. And the Astros. So you can go coast to coast. Coast to coast? One lucky fan wins two trips. Two trips. Win a trip to New York. And to San Francisco. To see the Yankees and Rangers. And the Giants and the Astros. The winner goes coast to coast for fantasy play-by-play. -play. All you have to do to win is watch the games. Watch the games. Just watch the Rangers. And the Astros. To go coast to coast. With HSE Baseball. The, the best, best team, team on, on TV. TV. Kirby and Masakayan leading Fontana and Forsyth through Goodman. Maria Barnes, glad you're along on Prime Network this day from Sacramento. Carolyn Kirby trying to close out the match. Good up by Masakayan. Liz can score. And does so. 14 to 10. Liz Masakayan playing extraordinary defense. Not only that, but it's unbelievable how she handled that high set coming back over her head. Championship point. You know what? That was also very close to being an ace. If that gets over the net, that clears the net. I don't know if there's any way in the world Forsyth or Fontana are going to be able to get there. It had a lot of bite on it. Did you notice how her toss went up into the solar system? <laughs> She's tossing the ball so high out here. There was a touch at the net, so it'll be a side out. Kirby and Masakine working hard to catch that 6 o'clock flight. Not wasting any time here at the end of the match. Over on two. There's a shrewd play by Barbara Fontana, shooting the volleyball, catching the defense off guard. I think defensively you become so conditioned to watching the ball get hit three times and you relax a little bit. And that's why when you go over on one or two, it can catch the defense napping. there for this set and you'll notice how she kept the ball way out in front of her right shoulder that's what every volleyball player aspires to do and she did it so well there another side out Fontana and Forsyth will not choke they will not succumb to any sort of pressure because it's championship point they've been in this position so many times in the past and as we talked about right off the top of this match they've had more success than any other team against Kirby and Masakayan ball just did touch the top of the net so now Liz Masakayan Fourth championship point. Masakai is just kind of sitting back there in center field trying to read where the hit will go and using her speed to get there. And 14. Smart of her to kind of hang back deep and move forward because it's a lot easier than trying to move backwards in the sand to get a deep shot. Fourteen to ten. We are locked in on that score, and yet another match point for Kirby and Masakayan. They have won every tournament this year, but Myrtle Beach 
They were defeated 15 to 12 in that final by Fontana and Forsythe. They came back, they won in San Diego, they won last weekend in Hermosa Beach. Can they win here in Sacramento? Fontana, Forsythe not giving in at all. Fontana's playing very steady right now. She's passing well and she's just hitting the open shot, the deep line shot. You'll notice because of this quick surface, not as many short shots because it's so much easier to run towards the net on this hard pack sand. Locked down. There's a point. 14 to 11 will get another side change. So Kirby and Masakaya, they might have a flight. They might miss that flight. They can't close out. Barbara Fontana and Lori Forsythe. Get it moving. And the silver bullet has the taste to keep it moving. Coors Light. Naturally brewed for a taste that goes down easy. Coors Light. Keep on moving. This is for all those commercials that show women content with seeing their reflections in dinner plates or coffee tables. Serious performance shoes from Reebok. Available at over 400 foot action stores nationwide. The sun hits the court and just nails you right in the face where I'm not really used to that. It was hot, maybe 20 degrees hotter out here. When it gets hot, it gets very sticky and your feet get hot and it's just all around just Africa hot. Trying to stay cool, this is unbelievable. Prime plays the world. the side change. Carolyn Kirby and Liz Masakayan have had five match points. They have not been able to convert any one of them. Now Barbara Fontana will serve. the beauty. You've seen a great number of handsets in this match. And one of the reasons, first of all, Kirby and Masakai employ it all the time, but with no wind, it's much easier to handset than bump set. Plus, on this surface, you don't have those big pockets of sand where you can kind of dig your toes into the sand and it can throw you off if you have a more stable surface. surface. And that's one of the frustrating things about playing in the beach and trying to handset. Great job by Barbara Fontana. Handled a difficult serve, passed it effectively, and then with the dink shot. As we've said several times, Fontana and Forsythe, they're so confident and so steady, they could sit here and side out all day long if they have to, especially when the pressure's on. Dug there by Fontana. There's another point, 14 to 12, slowly but surely, trying to get even. We played a 15, but again, you have to win by two. And another momentum shift now in favor of uh, Fontana and Forsythe. They're coming alive here. You can see the pressure is kind of on Kirby and Masakai as they take a timeout. 14 to 12, so steady all of a sudden. Fontana and Forsythe, not really all of a sudden, they're always steady, but boy, they have not given 
Kirby and uh, Masakine any opportunity to save that last point. And Carolyn Kirby, uncharacteristically, didn't really strike the volleyball. As explosively as Kirby and Masakine are playing, Fontana and Forsyth are playing as steady. I mean, they are just getting to balls. They're just not making a whole lot of unforced errors. And they're forcing Kirby and Masakayan to beat them. They are not lying down and dying. You know, they're just really steady and confident at this point. Yes, they are. It's been a very good tournament here in Sacramento. And look at this, the 29th seeded team, Lisa Gathright and Annie Sherman, finished in seventh place this week, former UCLA players, the highest finish ever in WPVA history for a team that came into a tournament seated below 25th. And that has really been kind of the story that has taken place all year long. A number of uh, players and teams have surprised this year. You know, I've been waiting for this team to do something. They were both such accomplished indoor players. And not only that, they haven't even qualified for two events this year, which makes that even more impressive that they were able to pull out a seventh. Lori Forsythe. Blocked, but on down on their side of the net. So it works as a side out. The ninth championship point now for Kirby and Masakine. The previous eight have all ended in side outs. Let's see which direction they go. Does she go at Fontana or Forsyth? Another delicate shot. Montana makes those look very easy. In fact, they are not. Playing so steady, passing very well. Shank pass. Both Masakai and Kirby went for it. Another point. It's 14-13. Putting the pressure on Kirby and Masakai to respond here the longer Montana and Forsyth hang on. The more pressure that's on Kirby and Masakai and no communication there and just a great serve down the middle. Always a difficult serve to pass. A missed serve by Fontana kind of hits off the side of her hand. Championship point number 10. Again, harmlessly down, inbounds in the sand. I definitely get the feeling here that Forsyth and Fontana are as relaxed as they've ever played and just very steady, and that Kirby and Masakine have really tightened up. I think that's very accurate. Masakine blocked. Does it go down? 14 off. Rory Forsyth take a bow. Such an incredible blocker. She gets up and over the net so quickly for such a big player. You can see how she kind of just hangs in the air waiting for Masakine to hit it. Lori Forsyth, maybe one of the most underrated beach volleyball players ever. She's such a great blocker. She's so good at aligning the defense, and she makes her partner, Barbara Fontana, look good. Those two have been spectacular the last few minutes. All even at 14. What a match. Would you play golf with this broken club? It could make you a better golfer than you ever dreamt possible. Hi, I'm Al Geiberger, and I found an amazing golf club that can help you hit them longer and straighter. Hi, my name is Jeff Horney, and this is my service dog, Tyler. Tyler is one of the many service dogs trained free of charge by Texas Herring and Service Dogs, a nonprofit organization. Tyler helps me every day by picking up things I drop, fetching my wheelchair, and a hundred other things. He's a real icebreaker, too. They adopt their dogs from animal shelters, so they're helping dogs as well as people. Tyler goes everywhere with me, even to restaurants. To learn more about service dogs, call these numbers. At Mainland Chevy Olds Toyota in Texas City, there's no question, there's no hassle. Every 94 Chevy, every 94 Oldsmobile, every 94 Toyota, 
is clearly marked with your no-hassle price. And Ron Carter Mainland pays you top dollar for your trade. So you know exactly what you're paying. The prices on the windshield of every 94 Chevy Olds or Toyota. A clearly marked no-hassle price. Mainland on the Gulf Freeway exit 15 of Frontage Road. Tour exclusively on HSE. First time all year, we'll have a final that goes overtime. Kirby and Masakayan led 14 to 10. Looked like they were going to close it out. They had 10 match points, couldn't convert any of them. And Fontana and Forsyth have gotten even. You must win by two. Oh, no! What does that blocking presence of Forsyth do to the psyche of Kirby and Masakayan? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I'm surprised that they're not bringing their sets off the net a little bit. I mean, they're still setting each other so tight to the net, and that's where Forsyth is most effective. Masakayan there taking the line on both players. So many one-handed digs in this match couldn't pull off another. You know, another another thing that I've noticed that Fontana and Forsyth have done well is that they're setting off the net a little bit. It's confusing Kirby and Masakayan as to whether or not they should be going up and blocking or hanging back and playing defense. Kirby goes up, goes down the line. Back down the line, we got it. Masakayan to the back line. 14 off. 14-14. Masakayan now with a half a dozen service errors. Masakayan punches it around the block that time. You know, normally when Masakayan struggles with her serve like we're seeing her do here, Kirby will respond with several aces, and that has not happened for them this weekend. championship point for Kirby and Carolyn was just pointing to herself in her brief conversation with her partner Masakine is saying as if to say we're gonna do it right here good, good. another side out same story Though Forsyth and Fontana have beat Kirby and Masakayan this year, I think this is the tightest they've ever played them. I mean, last time they beat them, they came out, they were kind of explosive, and they just ended it. But this is just shows how strong they are and how steady they are and how they are able to play them so tightly because they understand their game so well. They've studied it. Left-handed, it got the outside of the line. So here we go with 14. Point number 14 for the championship for Masakayan and Kirby. Lori Forsyth had no other alternative but to go over. And she did so effectively. So poised. I mean, it's easy to kind of uh, get excited with a play like that and hit the ball into the net. It's not an easy play to make. It's a high set coming from the back of the court, and she handled it so well. It's like two punch-drunk fighters in the 15th round. That's exactly what I was going to say. Sure. Another block, but it comes down out of bounds, so a side out. 15th championship point. 15-14. Carolyn Kirby will take her turn. One of the things that Fontana and Forsyth do in their training is they watch video, they watch film on previous matches, particularly matches when they've played 
Kirby and Massa kind of find weaknesses, find their own weaknesses, so they know what to work on. Go, go! Fielded. Oh, what an amazing job defensively. First to field a great serve and then to actually win the rally. Well, that was a really good serve by Carolyn Kirby. Cross court short, it kind of dropped as it went over the net and uh, Forsythe just handled it with such poise and such grace, popping the ball up and then to complete the point. Here we go. You'd never know the score was 15-14 by the way they handled that. No, not at all. Timeout called by Masakai and Kirby. That's one of those timeouts taken because your will's almost broken. I mean, Callan Kirby hit an extraordinary serve. And let's face it, the pressure is always on Kirby and Masakai, and everybody expects them to win. And when you're in a tight match like this, 15-14 when you led and should have closed it a long time ago, that's all you're feeling is pressure. For Forsyth and Fontana, it's kind of more like, what do we have to lose at this point? The best of the American League and the best of the National League both are on the best team on TV. There's a fly ball deep right field. It is over and it is out of here. Astros and Rangers are pure excitement on HSE, the best team on TV. Whoa, did he hit it. Hey, baseball fans. HSC wants you to watch. The Rangers. And the Astros. So you can go coast to coast. Coast to coast. One lucky fan wins two trips. Two trips. Win a trip to New York. And to San Francisco. To see the Yankees and Rangers. And the Giants and the Astros. The winner goes coast to coast for fantasy play-by-play. -play. All you have to do to win is watch the games. Watch the games. Just watch the Rangers. And the Astros. To go coast to coast. With HSE Baseball. The, the best, best team, team on, on TV. TV. Unbridled excitement is yours when HSE takes you from the starting gate to the finish line. It's the latest news from Sam Houston Race Park on the stretch run. Tuesday evenings at 5 on HSE. Hi, I'm Larry North, and I want to welcome you to my new show, Get Fit. I'm going to teach you the right way to work out and exercise. Eating, exercise, workout, and a whole lot of fun. championship point have you ever seen that great a number no i haven't especially not against two teams like this top teams fontana you know we're kind of just saying are they handle another serve handle another serve massacai and rick that serve. i know as i said several times Forsyth and fontana are just playing steady and confident Passing and setting and putting everything away. That time buried by Masakayan and would have taken a great overhand dig by Fontana to elevate the volleyball. 17th championship point. For the cut shot, Fontana went deep in the court. It's so difficult on defense once you have mentally committed to go one way to then change and go the other. I mean, it's obviously a lot easier on the, the hard court indoors, but in the beach, it's tough to change direction. Oh. You have to wonder at this point if Liz Mass 
Sakayan's arm is starting to get tired. She's seen uh, most Sakayan of the serves for her team. She has hit several balls in this match, and it's not as if she's just uh, hitting them without power. She has spanked a lot of balls. That's long. Another side out. We're within nine side outs of the all-time WPVA record for side outs, which is 106. It's that last weekend when uh, Castro and Roquet played Richardson in Canoop in Hermosa Beach. 14-15. Steady Fontana and Forsyth have been. Hey, Kirby and Masakayan have been equally steady. It's so like Liz Masakayan at a tight point in the match like this to go and hit the line. We've seen her do that several times before. The match will be tight. She just goes for it. This is championship point number 19. We're going to have to bring out a calculator pretty soon. No! And you know what? I, you have to wonder if, if fatigue is starting to play a factor. That serve for uh, Carolyn Kirby, she didn't get out of the sand like she normally does. Masakayan. That's one of those nectar sets you like to talk about. <laughs> that was a nectar set, but also I wanted to point out that Masakayan didn't look the least bit fatigued as she skied out of the scan there and pounded that ball. Maybe we're getting fatigued watching <laughs> extraordinary play. That sails long. Liz has really struggled at times in this match with the service errors, her eighth service error. Forsyth uses the floater. Kirby poking it in. Could have been a point for Forsyth and Fontana, but a little uh, breakdown in their ball control. 15, 14, Carolyn Kirby. You know, that we've seen a lot more service errors for Kirby and Masakai, and Fontana and Forsyth have been much more steady, and that's enabled them to keep the pressure on Kirby and Masakai. Check pass, there it is. The marathon is over. It's been won by Carolyn Kirby and Liz Masakayan. Oh, man, what a match. 16-14. They went overtime. And it looked as if uh, fatigue set in for Forsyth with that last play. She did not even move her feet to pass that ball. But then again, Kirby ripped her serve. Another look at this serve from Carolyn Kirby. And you can see Forsythe's feet did not even move in the sand. She simply uh, stuck her arms out there and tried to pass that ball. Not unlike Carolyn Kirby to finish a match with an ace serve. It took them 20 plus match points before they could finally convert one. But Carolyn Kirby and Liz Masakayan champions yet again, 16 to 14 over Barbara Fontana and Lori Cotis Forsythe. Get it moving. And the silver bullet has the taste to keep it moving. Cruise Light. Naturally brewed for a taste that goes down easy. Coors Light. Keep on moving. This is for all those commercials that show women content with seeing their reflections in dinner plates or coffee tables. Serious Performance Shoes from Reebok. Available at over 400 foot action stores nationwide. To give my home a nice atmosphere, I've tried French Provincial, Danish Modern, English Country, and Spanish Classic.
colonial. Little did I know that for nice atmosphere, all I really needed was American Standard, a reliable American Standard air conditioning system. It's one design that will last. I wish I'd known that back during my Spanish colonial period. American Standard Air Conditioning, built to a higher standard. If Mike was here right now, he'd want to be like me, because I'm the man. Yeah, you the man. <laughs> Don't do nah. this my house. He'd be serving me. Hey, I play you for that Gatorade. I'm down. Gatorade, the one, the one with the minerals, the minerals and energy, the energy and fluids are slamming the thirst, the thirst inside of me. Gatorade, thirst, what you gotta get in the Oh, where's my Gatorade? <laughs> nothing slams a deep down body thirst better than Gatorade. Absolutely nothing. How about some ball? Oh, I can play this game. Oh, we can't play that game. Prime Network's presentation of the Coors Light Pro Beach Volleyball Tour has been brought to you by Coors Light. When you want a taste that goes the distance, reach for the silver bullet. Keep on moving. By Gatorade, the thirst quencher for that deep down body thirst. And by Reebok. Our final score in our championship match from the Reebok Sacramento Open. 16 to 14, Kirby and Masakayan for the 19th time together are victorious. One of the great matches of the year. And right now, they are with my partner, Maria Barnes. Maria? Thanks, Drew. A record 103, actually not a record, almost a record 103 side outs. At 14-14, did you think it was ever going to end? 103? <laughs> I'm glad I didn't know that. Um, yeah, that was a long 14-all, and it required a lot of patience and togetherness. And um, I was pretty proud of uh, the way with, we withheld that uh, concentration there at the end. Why do you think you were able to pull it out? Well, it was tough. Lori and Barb could not make an error on the siding out, and we just they put a lot of pressure on us to serve tough. So that's why we ended up making a lot of errors because they, they were just very, very focused on setting out very well. So um, we had to do the same. I mean, they were forcing us to do the same as well, and we did. Yeah, we kept pointing out how steady they were, but you obviously had to be even more steady. Congratulations Thanks. to both of you. It was Thank a you. very well-played, close match. Ker Kirby and Masakine come out on top once again. Drew? <laughs> All right, Maria, thanks very much. Our Gatorade play of the semifinals. It was Lori Forsyth putting up the big block, a stump block for a point. We saw her do that a couple of times in the final, and here she stuffs one down. It was 9-4 to four at that point. That point made it 10-4. to four. Our Gatorade play of the semifinals. Our killer loop killer play of the day. Well, that occurred in the finals, and it happened numerous times. Liz Masakayan going up and putting it down as she does so well, our killer loop killer play of the day. Time to check all the money positions from Sacramento in 13th place, Lucy Hahn and Helen Reale. Brigado and Atkinson also a 13th place. Lidioff and Blumquist in 13th. And a fourth team, Bailey and Millen. In ninth place, also four teams, Marie Anderson and Lisa Arce. Natalie Cook and Anita Palm from down under in Australia, they were in ninth place. Campbell and Roach had a ninth place. And Janice Hare and Johanna Wright. Now, Hare will pair up with Lisa Arce next weekend in Newport, Rhode Island in the shootout. Annie Sherman and Lisa Gathright, two UCLA players, the 29th seed coming in. They finish in seventh position. Also, Kendra Lynn Gardner and Christine Schaefer in seventh position. Fletcher and O'Hara in fifth place. Also, Gail Castro and Elaine Roquet slipping down from a runner-up spot a couple of weeks ago. Monique Oliver and Gail Stammer in fourth. They lost a great third-place game, 18-16, to Canoop and Richardson. It really was a marvelous game, as was the final. Barbara Fontana and Lori Cotis Forsythe, as you know, lead, losing to Liz Masakayan and Carolyn Kirby. 19 victories and 21 stops together for Masakayan and Kirby, and the first time a final goes overtime in two years on the WPVA Tour. I know you couldn't do anything but enjoy that final. We'll meet again in uh, the shootout in Rhode Island in Newport, Rhode Island, in a week or so. Till then, for our entire Prime Network crew and my partner, Maria Barnes, I'm Drew Goodman. Take care. So long from Sacramento.